Now it's come to my attention after the last video that I've spent way too much and I think I've gone away from the channel or what I or my original vision for the channel. So I thought, how is it that I can go back to the journey of making things cheap? So I thought, well, why don't I try? All right, so let's see if I can build a cheap video editor. So my mission today is quite simple. I want to try and build a cheap video editor. And I was thinking, well, first of all, let's start with the actual base. So I was thinking, well, what is the best way to do it? And I'll basically want as much computer horsepower for basically the least amount. So I was thinking, if this will sort of help, this is how I do it. And we're going to want to limit the price okay so this one honestly i'd say that this would be sort of okay although obviously get one with a little bit of ram now i've got a little confession to make that i've actually already purchased my one i'm just filming this part for youtube but i brought mine off facebook marketplace oh no this is not x58 yeah that would be okay that one's no no good but now i just can't believe how expensive some of these are so this one i'd definitely say would be pretty good if it was for about half the price. And keep in mind, this is AU prices as well. So, so this is the one that I tipped off. So if this one was $150, I'd say, yeah, go for it. Now that we've gone through the method and with the purchase, I mean, honestly, what could go wrong? Well, it turns out quite a lot. Now, although the system has plenty of potential, we're still stuck with some of the server only features. Like for example, the power supply. I mean, we've got dual redundancy power supply. However, good luck trying to power a high graphics card as getting a special cable that will actually work with anything in the system. Also, I did play around with it a little bit in Linux, but in terms of cable, only the VGA will work, well, straight away. I'm sure that if I'm stored an actual OS, then yes, I could get a graphics card that doesn't require a, any power that isn't supplied by the PCIe slot. Apart from that, it did actually come with some pretty good hardware. However, there's also another problem with using the system. And I guess we'll, let's have a ch let's check out the specs. And to do that, let's turn on the system. Now, you know, you might be having a nice night, you know, laying on the bed, maybe it's raining on the roof, you know, that nice serenity. Now, unfortunately, I can't screen capture it like, like I normally would due to the VGA plug, but so we're gonna have to go a little bit cruder with the phone in front of the monitor. If that interests you, the uh, mouse works in the bar, so I guess that's Dell engineering for you. Let's have a look at the system. And really, only thing we care about. So we've got memory, so we've got 256 gigs, around right 16 mega transfers. That's quite a lot of voltage for the memory, but anyway, this is DDR3, don't forget. Processor, the 2650. Still an eight core, not bad. But the dreams of turning this into a cheap video editor, it's going to take a little work. Not impossible, but this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to bring you on for the journey. So let's get the parts ready. Let's see how we go. One, the motherboard's going to have to be swapped out. So I've got the X79 motherboard. As you can see here, the X9D R3F. For the CPUs, we won't use the ones that come in here. We're going to use the E5-2687W. Coolers, go on generic cooler. Single speed. Don't worry about that. Although these processors are 150 watt, gonna be interesting how they pair with the motherboard. For the boot drive, got solid state, 256. For the long-term storage, this is a four terabyte hard drive. And for the works drive, although I really wanted to go solid state drive, we've got a 7200 RPM. It's a digital W black. Now, just to give you an idea of how much work this hard drive's done, I think I've logged uh, 37,000 hours. And these are around 26,000. This one slightly more. Could be like 32,000 as well, I think. So 37,000 hours, 32,000 hours, and 27,000 hours. For the graphics card, we're just going the MSI 1080, not the 1080 Ti. So this is the only 8 gigabyte variant, but still a decent card. So if we just have a look at the system parts, the only system I'm using out of the original server is actually the RAM. I find that kind of funny. So we're going to go into the pricing now. Okay, so this is the one that came with the server. This is one that I'm replacing with. So you can see it's got a very healthy one gigahertz extra on the core. And this is just some of the function of life. Although, which is interesting, if you look at the maximum RAM, so the other one allowed greater RAM capacity, but yeah, really. Yeah, just get the upgraded version anyway for $8 US. As for the motherboard, look, for $100. So I go for different prices. So good luck finding them. I haven't verified any of these sellers, so you know, the risk is always there. And these are just some of the SAS ports. I forgot about the SAS port. But yeah, you would have seen me look at those. Yeah, and I was right, four per port. And if this is be believed, this almost looks like the exact same kit that I got in here. And that's for $5 US. So 
the actual the base server itself cost me 150 dollars but i could have just built this cheaper if i didn't actually bother going to to the server in the first place but that doesn't matter i have the use for the server anyway at least as a proof of concept all right let's put it together okay now to the actual build and i'll only do one side as to not waste our time this should be very close to x99 so this is the x79 motherboard Okay, so first thing we want to locate is the triangle, and same deal. Triangle to the motherboard is on this side. Give it a little wiggle. My side first, and mission accomplished. Okay, now that we installed the CPU, unfortunately I think Cooler Master made this. It seems to be a ran out. I can't find my Arctic Silver. Oh yeah, nice and warm. Homemade spatula. Spread it around. Oh, good. Now, what is interesting with this is because it's a long base, so when, you, when you're shopping for your cooler, make sure you really know where it is. Now, we're going to want to peel this off. You see, we don't leave the plastic on there. Excellent, well done. Now, as it is, so I can only go one way. I can't go that way. So you can see it's the rectangle shape. So when you're shopping for a CPU cooler, make sure you be very mindful of that. Now, when mounting the CPU, I'd recommend starting one corner only a little bit. Counter torque it to the other side. And same here. Now with the CPU, just remember, if you want to know what cooler, just make sure you know the motherboard. So if it's a square or the rectangle, I forget what they call it. I might flash it on screen. And I thought it'd be better if I just inject it here. So as you can see, narrow versus square, and it sort of gives you a brief insight into why there's two different types. So just be aware of your motherboard. And I got it here if you want to pause and just to make sure. Yeah, if you find that helpful. All right, moving on but it is the LGA 2011. As for the DRAM, I'll be populating all of the slots. Really gonna have to check temperatures though once I get the system running. DDR3, it's very obvious where the notch is, so it's not close to the middle. Just look how many memory modules are on this. As for installing it, make sure we have it in. And beautiful, that's how we do it. All right, let's make once so all the CPUs and sticks are in. Oh, here it is. Installed now. Unfortunately, it came with clips, so I wasn't able to use zip ties. Or at least it didn't make sense. Rams in. I got the TPM header 1.2. What is interesting, I did have a quick look at the manual. I was actually a little bit surprised. So these are SATA 2 and these are SATA 3. So the white ones are the ones that you're going to want to plug in your modern SSDs in, and these, your normal hard drive should be adequate. And you got some extra ports if you want it. So you'd plug the appropriate cable in, and yeah, you'd have, I think they support four each. And there it is. Looking pretty good, actually. Keep in mind that the, it's going to be 150 watts each CPU, so that's going to be fun. Okay, so we can just have a quick look. We can see the system, it's got the hairdryer effect, so air's going to come through here, come through here. Now, as for the case, we're going to flip the top fan, so it also draws air in. So you're going to have one exhaust. You're gonna have three fans pulling in and air's gonna come from the top. Just a quick note with the hard drive. So these are the hard drives. I'm using a rubber damper and I'd recommend using that every time you put a hard drive in. Check that out for cable management. Okay, it's a bit of a rat nest down there, but don't worry about that. Now the goal of this system wasn't necessarily make it pretty, so make it cheap. All I gotta do now is the graphics card. Okay, the system. Now we can't go through the, the first PCIe 16 slot because it'll get in the way of the RAM. So we have to go to the second one. Now, after reading the manual, I'm assured that it's electrical 16 as well. Be careful with some server motherboards, even though they might only be eight, but today is no problem. And for those who don't know, this is what a graphics card looked like. I was shocked when somebody asked me. So yeah, this is an all in one. We don't pull it apart and upgrade it. Not unless you're absolutely top tier, but that's... And that's just all there is to it, really. Your screwdriver. Your screw. And cable running from two different line to the power supply. See? Cable in. Make sure it's all the way. Ah, oh, this one's only six pin. And that's the graphics card installed. Well, it's all done. All that's left now is to see what this bad boy can do. And look at it fly. Okay, so I didn't all go perfectly well. I mean, for whatever reason, it wouldn't boot with all the RAM sticks in, so I had to do one per CPU, then it booted, no other incident after that. All right, I'll meet you in the BIOS. Okay, so just a few things that you want to set up. There's, I'll just go through some of the, like the really basic things. You can see that the memory is sh showing fully there. 
power management. This is something that you will have to do. So I couldn't work out why my CPU wasn't turboing. So this was set to zero. So yeah, so I just had to adjust some of these. Apart from that, I still label C series. Ah, this is another, another really cool feature. So we can see with the PCIe, but we've got bifurcation. So we can go four by four by four by four. I thought that was a pretty cool thing. And it looks like all the 16s have got it. And if you want to, you can go eight, you can go four by four. So it's some pretty cool features. Unfortunately, the only thing I was a little bit surprised is it doesn't have a secure boot function. So that means if you want to install Windows 11, you're gonna to have to go for another step as well. And yeah, you got your TPM, but yeah. So it's happy to go to when needed, 3.8 on the single core. And we got it to 73 degrees. So it is quite warm for a Xeon processor. So I'm hoping that the cool will be fine. And look at that. So for the half a dozen of you who watched my last video of me tuning the 3900KS, you'd see that our voltages are actually very similar. So I'm pretty happy with that actually. And that only spiked during the Cinebench. So overall, I'm very happy with the system. Well, that's the Cinebench score once everything else is shut off. So it's not too bad, but let's see how it goes video editing. And if video editing goes well, mission accomplished. And mission accomplished indeed. Now, the only issue with video editing because I am using this hard drive. So, because I'm still using spinning rust, I only got the SSD for the boot drive. It is absolutely pegged when doing anything critical, which is fine. I mean, it is a weakness, but that's all part of the budget, I guess. I'd probably say that it is actually worthwhile getting a SSD. So, even if it's just a SATA 3 port, but overall, 22 minutes, that's a little bit sad, but there might be a few reasons why. Keep in mind, this is. 4K 60 Hertz. Okay, so if you have a look here, the bus interface is showing Gen 2, so 16 by Gen 2. So I don't know why it's doing that. So that could be a contributing factor. And don't forget that I am still using a hard drive at the end of the day as well. But most of my things, like uh, last time I edited a video, I did it in half the actual video time. But anyway, just gotta let it go sometimes. It's a very cheap system. Or not unless there's something else, who knows. Project Smith Tech signing out, peace. What is this? I'm feeling hungry. Well, you definitely can't eat it. Subscribe for more.